Good evening. Welcome to the, I almost said New Year's, National Day of Thanksgiving Eve service, um, where we get to celebrate Thanksgiving, and we get to be here with thankful hearts to hear about what God does and continues to do. Uh, our uh, service is printed for us in our bulletin, so we will follow along as it is laid out for us. So let us open with our opening hymn. It is hymn 892. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the day which the Lord has made. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. O oh Lord, open my lips. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us, rejoice Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with praise and thanksgiving, 789. <laughs>
the Old Testament reading for Thanksgiving is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you known that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that, as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes, surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these good things. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern from me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And the Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I less me left Mesopotamia, Macedonia. No church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied having received from Euphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice ac acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in, the, in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance, and lifting up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, 
praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And when he said to him, and he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together, let us confess our faith as it's found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God. You may be seated, and we continue with hymn 785. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving we approach you, laying out our needs for life, forgiveness, and salvation. Keep us in all your gifts as you continue to provide and hold us through all things until the resurrection. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how do you approach God in thanksgiving when nothing is going right? How do you, in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make known to God your requests, your needs? With a thankful heart, how do you pray for your needs? St. Paul, in the letter to the Philippians, our epistle lesson, places us in an amazing situation. He shows us where we stand before God in need of all things. Look at the Hebrews in our Old Testament lesson. They are slaves with no power, with no might, with no strength to overthrow Egypt why they're slaves. God seeing and hearing their plight, the plight of his people, he sends to them Moses to rescue and to bring them out of slavery. Moments into their freedom, the realization 
that they cannot care, cannot provide, and cannot keep themselves through the journey in the desert sets in. You hear them complain, Moses, have you brought us out of Egypt into this desert because the graves in Egypt were filled? That sounds like a thankful heart to me. This is where we find ourselves often with the gifts of God given to us and they flow abundantly and we lament the life we lament the situation in which we live out in those very gifts. Think of this. In the year 1593, King James I set forth a law entitled the Act Against the Puritans, which simply stated that if you did not go to a congregation within the Church of England within 40 days, you could be arrested and placed in jail until you committed yourself again to the Church of England. You know this is the story of the pilgrims. And you see they saw this as a religious persecution and they fled England to the Netherlands. But then while they were in the Netherlands, they saw that their children were assimilating and becoming more Dutch and holding on to their culture and not remaining true to their English culture and heritage. So they once again packed up to settle a new land, a new world, to truly start afresh. Now can you imagine the hope? Can you imagine the excitement? Can you imagine the fear for such a trip? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know the Puritans prayed. You know they hoped. For 66 days they floated. They sailed to the unknown. 103 people plus 30 member crew started the voyage. And in those 66 days, about five people died at sea. Arriving in the new world, seeing freedom at last, they land. In November and they find nothing but hardship they quickly try to build shelters to survive the winter after the first winter is over there are about 45 people left where do you find hope how do you keep on going in the midst of things like that again you know what happens the nearby Indians help through the winter but more importantly they show these pilgrims how to catch eels and to harvest, plant and harvest corn. And after they actually have a harvest, they have a harvest feast. They actually now have something to celebrate and celebrating the gifts they have received. In attendance, the first Thanksgiving, it's reported there are about 90 Indians and 53 pilgrims. And it's not until George Washington in 1789 there is set aside the fourth Sunday of November as the national day of Thanksgiving. This is what we will celebrate tomorrow. And even in this national, this secular holiday, we can see God providing, God giving, God keeping. Dear people, we live in the greatest nation on earth. And only through Thanksgiving can we see and know God's work as he provides for us in all our earthly needs. What does he not do for this body and for your life? And what does he not do in this life? And he gives us just a glimpse into what he has done for us eternally. We get to look at all the gifts that we have, all the blessings we have right here and right now. And they are just but a glimpse into the magnitude of the eternal gifts that he has given to us in Christ our Lord. Our God speaks all things into creation. He does not simply just give you life, but he forms you. He knows you. He keeps and provides for you in an intimate way. 
with that very word of God. He then brings you through baptism to be his treasure, to be his people. It is in and through this gift that he treats you as a son who has a true place always within the family of God. We are then placed into this church, this ship, and we are on this voyage. Let it be called life. And we are traveling to the new world. The world, the land promised to us through our fathers by God. This voyage is hard. You're living it. You know these trials and tribulations, the battles that you face day in and day out. And you know that this voyage is dangerous. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It is he who pilots this ship. It is he who knows the way and has cleared a path for us. It is he who brings you to the new world prepared for you in Christ our Lord. The Hebrews, in the midst of their 40 years in the desert, were told that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. It is here in his ship, his church, his house, that he feeds you with that very word, the life of Christ Jesus. How can we not be thankful in all things on this side of heaven? We are traveling to the fulfillment of all of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. His death gives us life. And because his work is done to do what we cannot, we have hope. We have salvation. We are not left to fend for ourselves in the deadly winter of the trials and tribulations of this life. We are not just shown how to survive. We are not shown just how to keep on going. We are given the life of Christ to live here and forevermore. Tomorrow, we as a nation thank God for his blessings that he continues to provide and to give. Tomorrow, as a church, in supplication and prayer, we thank God for his blessing in Christ for our salvation. Tomorrow, as family, we gather to rejoice and live in the gifts of one another, knowing that we also get to have that very gift, that very gathering in the great reunion of the resurrection through Christ Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. So this evening, when we have on our minds all the preparation, all the joy of what is going to happen tomorrow, we get to do this with thankful hearts because it is in and through God we have what we have. And it's not just stuff, but it is things, gifts given to us by a loving God who wants you to know that very love so that you will live in and through that grace. Blessings be upon you in your thanksgiving celebrations, for we know that the salvation is ours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us continue with the gathering of our offerings.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities, our communities, for, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for, those for whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for those who care for them, Lord, let us pray to the Lord. We give thanks, O Lord, for the great treasure of your grace. And we pray you to guide us, lest we value too highly the things of this world and fail to learn generosity, sustain the poor and all in need, and lead us to share with them what you have richly entrusted to our care. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Bless Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God now and forever. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this day. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.